Hi, I'm Maddie. Have you ever considered how to catch a great white shark? These highly adapted predators are some of the most feared animals on our planet. Their mouths are lined with 3,000 serrated teeth, and their sense of smell is so sensitive they can sniff out a single drop of blood in over 25 gallons of water. So why would you ever want to catch one? Well, sadly, over 100 million sharks of varying species are caught and killed every single year just to keep up with the demand for shark fin soup. Many sharks don't reach sexual maturity until later in life, so sadly, most of these animals don't get a chance to breed. But a team of pioneering researchers from Monterey Bay Aquarium have been catching live great white sharks for scientific purposes. It's an incredibly dangerous task and one that we couldn't resist investigating, so we sent Sam out to meet Manny Eskera to find out more. Why would you want to catch a white shark? <laughs> It's a good question. <laughs> um, but really, we thought that having a white shark on display would be a, a really huge way um, to talk to people about the plight of sharks in the wild. And so it's a great ambassador species. We could tell them about what's going on with sharks in general because of finning, and that we're really exploiting shark stocks much faster than they can replace themselves. And, and people have this connection with white sharks. They know about white sharks. And so when they come and see it, we can really tell them about how to protect other species of sharks, not just white sharks. So Manny, just how do you catch a shark? When we were working with this uh, white shark program, it, that was a big mystery for us and we really didn't know. Um, but we did start partnering with some commercial fishers and we, we knew that there was some fishery interaction for the young of the year in the Southern California Bight, so uh, gill nets. We did get some animals that were tagged, um, but we also had some animals brought to us to an ocean pen. So the, the fishers, what they would do is put the shark into uh, a live tote where they had water running over the shark and, and keeping it ventilated and they, they would motor it to us to this uh, ocean pen. Mm -hmm. We would transfer the animal to the pen and then at that point we would try to get the animal to feed for us by stringing up dead foods for us. It's very odd, it's a bit surreal <laughs> yeah. and then murky water and you see this little shark dart by. Um, Is your when, heart kind of just pounding away? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> and then, um, but you know, when they're, they're alert and in um, good condition, you know, they don't want to be seen by you. So then where do they go from the pen? So once we uh, make the determination that they're in good condition, they've been feeding well, we think they're going to adapt well to our uh, exhibit, then what we would do is with the commercial fishers that are tending the pen that's anchored off the coastline, um, they would start to pull lines out that would shrink up this net pen and, and dry it up so that the shark then was in a smaller area where we could recapture it with a large hoop net put it into this shark box again on the vessel, motor into the shore, and then transfer it to an 11,000 liter fish transport tank that's on the back of a semi uh, tractor trailer. So, you know, it's a big process. And from there, we drive six hours north to Monterey. What do you find out from bringing a shark in here? Well, what we were able to do with some of these animals that we had in captivity were really to study um, the feeding rates on these animals, the growth rates on these animals. We were able to do a bioenergetic study and we saw that uh, you know, about a quarter of their energy went into growth. Uh, and they grew twice as fast as animals would grow in the wild. Um, you know, they're, they're not having to really forage for a living, they have it right there in <laughs> captivity. These are studies that we really couldn't do in the wild. Unbelievable. Don't forget to subscribe for more animal videos. See you soon on Earth Unplugged. Hi, I'm Sam. Have you ever considered if animals can be gay? Bonobos are well known as the real kings of the swingers, using sex for anything from saying hello to creating alliances around the dinner table. Males will meet with males, females with females, even the youngsters get involved, and about 50% of these copulations are homosexual.